is the Thule Easy Fold XT. Weighs about oh 40 pounds or so. Pretty easy. It's got wheels on here. You can see the wheels right here. Kind of helps it move around a lot. You can store this thing really easy. It's pretty compact, you can see. Holds up. I'm standing next to it, about the width of my legs. It's about how wide it is. We're going to get it mounted on the vehicle. The arm for for connecting it is right here. It's got a little lever, locking lever. So I just pull that out and that locks into place just like that. Slides in easy enough. You can see on this side it's got a pin. This pin goes into the hole of the receiver so you can adjust the so you can adjust how far it's in and then clip the push that in and that's a little safety latch to keep that from backing out. And then you also know that you've got it engaged in your two inch receiver right where it's supposed to be. So this has a lock on the knob which is really nice. This bar right here, when I crank this, this is going to expand. You see right now it wobbles in the hole. So I'm going to crank this down. And you get it pretty tight. And that locks that in. Now I'm moving the vehicle when I move the hitch. Pretty tight and that won't back out at all. I can lock that and that makes it a free spinning wheel right there so you can't uh, you can't loosen it up unless you have the key in there. So you can see how high this rides. This is up to my knee. Flip out the sides. Very easy. It goes up to about mid thigh. So it does ride pretty high. Flip this back. Back here is your ramp. So if you ask me, I think the ramp is kind of flimsy. I've not used it yet before. I'm going to try it once here just to see how it works and show you guys. But uh, normally I just lift it up one wheel at a time. So let's see how this goes. You can see these bikes are pretty tight together. There's a couple spots where the metal touches, like on the fork 
of one to the back rack of another and what I do is I just put a rag in there stick a rag in there to keep them from getting scratched but you can sort of see it sits pretty far away from the vehicle itself they don't bounce around a lot they sit up there really nice they fit on the platform easy those straps down below right here those are the extended length straps for the fat tires and the sun's pretty bright out today for a change so that just is what it is you can see it's got this step right here this latch allows you to do this that ramp folds Doors right underneath the ramp that folds out. Very snug, very secure. Those aren't going anywhere. You wouldn't want to ride down the road like this. couple notes about this rack first of all it's expensive it's uh, goes today on Amazon it's about six hundred ninety nine dollars um, I'll tell you I paid four hundred eighteen dollars for it I looked on Amazon waited a little bit I've got this little Google add-in Google Chrome add-in called honey and it makes sure that you get the lowest price so try to use that but it came up with a with one of these racks and it was like a scratch and dent type rack so it didn't list what the scratches and dents were it just said that the box was not in like a retail friendly condition so I thought in order to get the rack and not pay 700 bucks for it I thought uh, I'd try it and if it didn't work out I'd send it back to Amazon and I tried it and at first I couldn't tell where the scratch and dent was on it the box was in bad condition but the scratch and dent was one of these bar arms that hold the bike on it looks like somebody took a little screwdriver and dented one of the arms and then down here on the plastic there's a piece of plastic that's cracked off literally I didn't find it until I used this rack about three times so I consider that sort of a pretty good find a um, couple other things these arms although they're lockable it's probably a generic lock so I've got a cable lock that I would use to roll through the the wheels the the rims and whatnot and put that on there I know it's not going to make it theft proof but I'm looking to make it as theft deterrent as possible. Another thing is when you've got the bikes on here, um, don't don't put the batteries on there. I put them on there only because I put them on the rack just for this video, but normally the batteries would be in the back of the vehicle. That shaves off about six or seven pounds per bike as well. And then it opens up this space so you can use these locking arms in different configurations. One of the things that I've been playing with is how do I how do I put the bikes on the rack? So sometimes I put the larger bike, which is a Juice Bike Rip Current S. I put that on the, uh, the side nearest the vehicle. And then I'll put this Rad Mini on the outside. I flipped them. So if you noticed, first when I used the ramp and went up, that rip current was facing the other direction. But then the bike rack itself was right into the crankshaft, uh, the uh, sprocket guard area. So I didn't have that on the other side of the bike, so I flipped the bike around and uh, it fits perfect. So there's a few little nuances that you'll learn over time, and I'm still learning to be honest, about how those bikes uh, should go on here. This way with the rip current facing to the right and the, and the red mini facing to the left seems, seems really, really good. It doesn't look like these wheels are sitting on a lot of real estate, but uh, they're, they're completely on the rack and these straps are very very strong so 
I've done a few road tests so far. Uh, we took a couple trips to uh, the local uh, trails and they don't loosen up. Everything's good. Does the bike rack move just a little bit? It sways just a little bit like this, even though that locking um, knob secures it to the vehicle very, very tightly. But I think you want just a little bit of give in this thing, just so it doesn't hurt the bikes at all or the rack or whatnot. But when you're driving, it's rock solid, it doesn't go anywhere. And usually, unless I guess you're doing S-curves or going down washboard roads, you shouldn't get a lot of this anyway. The reason I bought this in the first place is because it was it was engineered for electric bikes, and there's another there's a couple other racks out there that are large uh, steel racks, and they'll handle the weight of electric bike. These bikes are, you know, 60 to 65 pounds a piece, so I needed something that was plus the 120 pound overall limit, which a lot of Thule bike racks are, a lot of other bike racks they'll max out at about a 50 or 60 pound bike. I needed two bikes on there. I didn't want to have to worry about it. I plan on going multi-state travel with this rack so again I, I never wanted to look back and not have something in my rear view mirror if you know what I mean. And lastly you saw how compact it was when I had it all folded up and that's really advantageous for me. I've got a single car garage that I use as sort of the man cave type setup for uh, all the gear and whatnot and so in order to minimize that and have these bat wings fold up um, it's very, very handy, and it's easily maneuverable. Now, you saw me set it up on one person, and would it be easier with two people, just like anything else would? Yes, it, yes, it would be. But, uh, but I can get that on there, no problem. And I'm really happy with this rack. I'm glad I bought it, um, especially at the $418. And would I do it again? Yes. Looking forward to many, many trips with this rack holding these bikes. And if you have any questions about this rack, uh, leave your comments below and I'll answer them as I can and I appreciate it very much.